This is the rear unit. It's right out. He's got a bronze washer. part of the drum. All these clutch plates are in there. Get them out. On this side by removing the snap ring. Next up is to remove these two flathead screws. Manual calls them Philister head screws. Never heard of that before, but apparently that's what they are. Then remove the rear internal gear. That reveals six springs. Longer springs than I thought. Actually, I'm guessing there must be 12 springs. Yep. The side that goes down the one that has this yellow paint thingy on it. Uh, it's also probably going to keep having these, these spring marks probably won't go away. That'll probably help too. Otherwise, I can't really see. The difference between the two sides. Tip the drum this way. This pin fell out. Uh, this was a challenge. This piston didn't want to move. Uh, I'm afraid the uh, rear unit may be damaged inside. Uh, I whacked on it with, uh, or I sprayed some PB Blaster in uh, the top, both in the center and in the two small holes. Whack down there with a hammer until I can get the piston to move far enough to get the snap ring to start out of the groove. So once I get the snap ring out, we'll see what happens. So actually there were six of these pins, one for each spring pair. Eventually I was able to whack the, uh, the piston housing out of the drum and now all the friction plates or the clutch plates will slide out and so our rear unit is basically now disassembled. The first plate in there was friction going against the back of the thing in the from. To get this snap ring off, the manual tells you to compress these lower rings to allow this to go down into the front unit. Uh, I'll probably have to do that on reinstallation, but for disassembly, um, I just disconnected or remove these rings from their grooves which are farther down and slid them up so this will slide down far enough so I can get this snap ring off. Again, that probably won't work for reassembly. Alright, now that snap ring is removed. Center bearing support just slides right off. There's 
another snap ring in there. It'll have to come out so that the thing so that I can remove the shaft. So yeah, with that snap ring removed, this shaft along with the planet carrier and its hub for the front clutch slides right out. And these two washers. with the rear drum. This is going to have to be pushed farther in to get the snap ring out. And with the snap ring now removed, now we got to push the uh, piston out the other side. the uh, review, reverse unit apart I had to turn this upside down and bang on a block of wood to get the weight of the rest of the system to knock this uh, speedometer drive gear off. I got that C-clamp with bending this bracket and whacking it with a hammer. So and I have the reverse planet carrier with this uh, bronze gear that I uh, hope I don't ever have to heat to 800 degrees. <laughs> uh, so this, this is, I'm just going to clean him up as a unit and not take him, well, I might take the snap ring out, I don't know, we'll figure that out. Um, the snap ring comes out to take the the flange and reverse sun gear off of the output shaft and rear planet carrier which has a washer back there selective thrust washer I believe the output shaft has three washers it's got the selective thrust washer as well as another bronze and a steel washer I guess Got the uh, rear bearing out with gentle tapping with the butt end of a hammer uh, from the other side. Got this snap ring out with a combination of my regular snap ring pliers and pick and I'm prying the, the screwdriver. And after that, slides right off. So the gear faces away, the internal gear faces away from the, uh, I'm not sure what that is, but that bolts to the, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but. First stage of taking apart the 50 Oldsmobile valve body. These three screws. This guy with the plate down while the. Yeah. So this is from facing from underneath the transmission. So we've got these in one, these in another, these in the other. Wow, this is like this with this guy over here. These two look so much alike, I'm going to have to keep them separate. Because they may be very much alike, but not identical. Then again, they might be identical, but I don't want to take a chance. This, these two have 
this part fatter than this part, whereas the one in the middle seems to have them both the same. So these two especially need to be kept straight. Okay, this guy was like this. Turned him over, remove the three little screws, take the plate off, and this guy comes out of this hole here, which is backed by this flat as opposed to this little ridge here. And it came out with the this end facing that way. Next up, this is still in the same orientation. This little plate came off of, off of here, these three screws, and he came out of there. There's another guy right there who keeps sliding to the end, but he won't come out. So uh, I'm not going to try to force him off. Yeah, I'm not going to try to force it out. But then he just fell out. It's like this. Okay, even with this guy out, there's another little guy in that hole. And also a spring is in here. And over on the other side, behind this, we had these guys, this plate held on by these three screws, and this one has a, the one in the middle has a spring. I'm not sure if that, if those are valves that come out, we'll figure that out. Alright, next up is this guy here is held on by two screws. Two screws on this side, one screw on this side. But uh, one thing I wasn't very careful about but got lucky was this is actually a check ball. Well, it's just a steel ball that sits in there. And when I loosened this far enough, it kind of popped out because it's held in by a spring. But fortunately, uh, I was able to catch it, it didn't fly away. Okay, these three screws came out, one, two, three. Underneath, there's this plate. Underneath, the main body, I guess this is. I don't think there's any valves left in there, but I'll have to check that. I'll see if the valves will come out of here now that we've got this apart.